Greetings, movie flicker pickers and podcast listeners. I'm the Western New Wonder, and you're listening to yet another episode from the Pick a Flick podcast. In this episode, I will be covering the movie The Fall Guy, loosely based on the 80s series of the same name that starred Lee Majors and Heather Thomas. Now, while I am a youngster who has watched reruns of several programs that came out in the 80s, I haven't seen the original series, so I virtually went to this movie cold with the basic facts being that it's directed by David Leitch, the man behind the lens for such films as the first John Wick, Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, and Bullet Train. It's got a stacked cast that I'll get into in a while, and it premiered to raves at the South by Southwest Film Festival back in March before opening theatrically in May, which surprisingly didn't do very strongly at the box office, with a gross of $180.5 million on a budget of $125 million. Now with this in mind, let's go over the plot for those interested in knowing more. Colt Seavers, played by Ryan Gosling, is working one of the most difficult, fast-paced jobs in the movie-making biz. Being a stuntman for self-absorbed Hollywood superstar Tom Ryder, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. But one day, a nasty injury leads to him retiring from the job. Sometime later, he gets a call from Tom's manager, Gail, played by Hannah Waddingham, who's requesting his stunt services in Australia for a movie called Metal Storm, starring Tom as one of the leads, which is coincidentally being directed by Colt's ex-girlfriend, cameraman Jody, played by Emily Blunt, who, per Gail's words, specifically wanted him for the stunt gig. Unfortunately for Colt, he quickly discovers that Gail lied to him by using an unenthused Jody as bait for the real conflict at hand. Tom has gone missing after running with some gangs, and Colt is tasked to find it before Jody's directorial debut, already gone over budget, mind you, is quickly shelved. An adventure, chaos, lies, and deception soon follows. As always, Ryan Gosling makes for a charismatic lead as Seavers, but then again, when isn't he charismatic? I probably shouldn't ask that when I haven't seen every morsel of his filmography. Anyways, he carries the movie's energy, but giving it some spark that I'm not sure that could have worked well had another actor been in that role. Emily Blunt turns into poison and various sweet performers as Jody as well. Ms. Blunt has some terrific chemistry and rapport with Mr. Gosling here, making for some wholesome rom-com energy within this action-tinged adventure. Despite the supporting actors wading in and out of the film, all of them looked like they were having fun. Aaron Taylor Johnson gave a scathing performance as Tom Ryder, Hannah Wanningham as great as the shady manager, Winston Duke was fun as a stunt coordinator, and Stephanie Hsu as Tom's personal assistant, despite an abbreviated amount of screen time, had a strong action sequence in the movie. And speaking of the action, the action scenes of this were an actual delight to see. A true love letter to stunt crews around the world, and as a result makes this worth the price of admission. Some jokes don't make the impact, while others do, one in particular making a reference to the film Thelma and Louise starring Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis, and it mainly got to stick out to me because admittedly I clocked out of that movie 30 minutes one night, only because I was really tired and I missed the crucial point that the reference in The Fall Guy makes, but the delivery of the reference between the two characters made it fun to me. Minor downsides for the movie, if any, would be this. As is the case with certain action fare, some of the yip yap exposition talk could have been cut down as the runtime of the movie becomes a bit overblown up to half an hour, but with firecracker leads, it's not too much of a slight. However, if there is any other major gripe outside of that, it would probably be this. I never ever want to hear I was made for loving you by Kiss again for a minute. While I definitely would have recommended another song from Kiss's catalog, and you know, I'm more of a look it up kind of guy, I could see how the song fits with the time of the original series' run. But come on, did we have to have to hear the original version as well as the cover version of it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. But minor gripe aside, let's get on to the Flickr Bucket rating scale. The Fall Guy is going to get a 4 out of 5 popcorn buckets from yours truly. Like I said, the movie was an entertaining, crowd-pleasing romp that felt like it just came and went when it first released a few months ago. Maybe everybody was still reeling from the Ace movie, or the marketing wasn't very strong for it, who knows. While there's nothing new being cooked up, it is still big fun, something that a lot of us really needs more in our lives. As someone who doesn't do movie theaters much, this is definitely one of those types of movies that I regret not seeing earlier. I highly recommend you guys to check it out via streaming or VOD, or however else you get your movies. And that's going to be a wrap on this episode. As for partway through the month, there will be more films to come on the podcast with reviews for award-winning documentary short Black Mark, Yorgos Lanthimos' Kinds of Kindness, and the upcoming Penguin series in collaboration with the Movie Lovers Unite podcast. I also recently covered the underrated comedy film Bowfinger, as well as a mini-review as part of my new Flicky Quickie Corner series for the moving film adaptation of The Supremes at Earl's All You Can Eat, so be sure to check those out if you haven't. 
If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening. And if you'd like to be updated on when new reviews drop, be sure to follow the show on platforms including Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or even Letterboxd for non-audio reviews. And to use the name Pickaflick Pod. That is P-I-C-A-F-L-I-C-P-O-D. Thank you all for tuning in, and until the next episode, this is the Western Wonder, and I'm signing out. Peace. Bye, have a great time.